finding your passion, how I found mine, and how you can find yours. In life, we will never have just one passion. As human beings, our desires and inspirations will be endless as we grow and evolve. If there was just one thing that fulfilled us in life, then everybody in the world would be happy. But that's not the case. Something that could fuel your fires one week could completely bore you by the second week. Sometimes we find success in something for a great while and then finally give it up. But you should never let this discourage you. Nor should you let it discourage you if you've never found something yet that makes life worth living. Passions aren't always exciting at first, and not every passion comes easy to a beginner. Sometimes the sheer perseverance and tenacity you give a certain skill or hobby leads to your feelings of passion. There will also be certain passions that you want to monetize and others you may not want to or shouldn't. Point is, passions come in many different shapes and sizes, and as you journey on in life, you are destined to find at least a few. Some things may block you from finding or feeling your passion, such as fear, limiting beliefs, or an unhealed heart and sacral chakra. Fear is false evidence appearing as reality, meaning there is nothing to fear other than fear itself. If we allow our fears to hold us back instead of using them as a tool to project us forward, we are living a reality that is mundane, boring, and uninteresting. It is our fear that is a doorway to love and happiness. And although there are adjustments that may be necessary for the transition, you almost always end up on the other side saying it was well worth it. Limiting beliefs can be tricky because they are echoes of past failures being recycled by your subconscious and brought forth to be alchemized by your awareness and higher levels of thinking or consciousness. However, these repeated notions oftentimes play in the background because we ignore the calls and they soon turn into the soundtrack to our life. Untrue stories we start to believe in just because they are constant within us. We must free ourselves from this broken record by recording on top of those old programs with the storylines that inspire more truth and evolution. When it comes to unhealed chakras, there are many ways to restore balance. There are Reiki, shamanic cleansings and readings, meditation, subliminals, affirmations, sound therapy, plant medicine, quantum healing, quantum jumping, self-healing techniques, and yoga. But how do you know if you have an imbalance in the first place? Well, for the heart, some symptoms may be lack of desire, lack of empathy, increased apathy, increased loneliness, and increased pessimism. For the sacral, symptoms would be lack of pleasure, lack of passion, lack of creativity, increased anxiety, and increased procrastination. So it's obvious that our energetic or spiritual body is always communicating with us through our physical one. So pay attention to the signs you are being given. If these chakras are out of alignment for a substantial amount of time, it could lead to more physical symptoms such as chest pains, stabbing, pinching, and heaviness, shortness of breath, restrained mobility, infections, especially in the genital area for the sacral, cramping of the uterus or other genital parts, discomfort during or after sex, discomfort urinating, or upper back and lower back problems. If you are having issues with any of these symptoms, you may want to think about healing your chakra imbalances as it is beneficial to you on many levels. So we've got our fears, limiting beliefs, and chakra imbalances out of the way. Let's focus on how to get better at allowing your passions to come to you. If there is anything I know about energy, it's that it loves to flow. It flows all the time, all around us, and can create miracles with focus and intent. Think of your passions in the same way. What is for you will never slip past you, so get in the mindset that your passion is already on its way to you. With an open mindset like that, you are opening the door to your array of opportunities. When something is for you, you will feel it first in your heart space. There is usually a little tinge or tickle or even a moment of increased heart rate, and your body will definitely recognize that. Take the signs your body gives you, and that is your internal guidance system. Notice what piques your interest, and what about that interest is so appealing. Luckily, we have the internet to show us how to do something, so use this tool to your advantage while you are discovering your interests. Depending on the time it takes, the resources required, and the technicalities of the passion, you may decide it is not for you, and the internet can really help you eliminate a lot of that guesswork. 
For example, I love watching do-it-yourself videos of house decor and organization, but because I watch those videos, I know the effort that that hobby requires, and that doesn't align to my story right now, and the desire is not burning enough for me to change my opinion. However, in five or six years, that may change, and I'm open to that reality as well. The last thing that I wanted to touch on is monetizing your passion. There will be some passions that are a no-brainer to monetize, but don't let monetizing a passion make you lose the love or creativity you have for your craft. Once you start losing love for your passion, it may be a good idea to keep that passion for yourself or for your close loved ones. If you lose creativity for your passion, it may be a temporary block, but if you notice your creativity flows more when you're doing it for fun or by yourself, it may be time to reconsider if it's in your best interest to continue selling your craft. Now here is a technique and practice that I use to help find my own personal passions in this lifetime or even in this cycle of my life. So you're going to make a list of three different things. What you're good at, even if you don't like it. What you like to do even if you're not good at it, and what you would like to learn to do. These three lists will help organize your mind and help you to see your potential. Making these lists on a piece of paper is important so that you can make it easier for your mind to interpret instead of the information jumbled up in one spot. Once you finish these lists with everything you could think of, it is time to find the similarities. Were there some things on your list that showed up more than once? Circle them. Is there something that surprised you? Circle it. Was there something you could try today in one week or this month? Circle them. These are your easy, simple interests that could develop into your passion. This is where you start. The rest is on you. If you have issues filling out your three lists or need more guidance on the topic of passions, feel free to set up a spiritual guidance tarot session with me so we can figure it out together. And if you have any other tips of how you found your passion and you would like to share it to the rest of the group, please go ahead and leave that down below in the comment section. Until then, I send you many blessings. Bye.